Yo, what is up guys? It's Chase Oliver 68. Now before I start my raw review, um, I just want to do this and really for all my subscribers and anyone who watches this video, please do this. There's a forum I run called pwmforums.com. I am the head admin of pwmforums.com. I'll be making a video later this week, but I'm also promoting it now. Please. And I and, and I and I would love it. If you guys if you guys join the forums and discuss there on a regular basis, because you know what? That forum was what brought me in to the IWC and now YouTube. That forum really taught me everything about professional wrestling. That forum has great members on there and it, right now, we're in the shitter. We need rebuilding and I am asking all my fellow subscribers, all the people that love watching my videos, if you guys want to talk to me at any time about wrestling, sports, or anything, on that forum, I'm on there every day, 24, not 24 7, of course, but I'm on there every day. I would appreciate it if you guys go into my description box, just click it, join the forums, and please do. Because later this week, you will see me post out a video why I would love for you guys to join PWM forums and why it means so much to me if you guys do join PWM forums and post there on a consistent basis. Thank you all for listening to this relaying message. And now let's get started for Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw was live in Oklahoma City. And last week on Raw, Triple H and Undertaker stole the thunder. Whoo, you see what I did there? <laughs> Only basketball fans will get that shit. But anyways, Triple H comes out and does another long promo. Uh, and all he's doing is talking about John Laronitis. And we don't really care about that. We only care what he has to say about The Undertaker. Basically, Triple H, in all his words and glory, basically said, no, he will not wrestle The Undertaker at WrestleMania. He has nothing left to prove. He doesn't want to see The Undertaker look like an old mess again. And that's it. Pretty much what Triple H had to say in that long 15-minute promo, with the good video packages in between, but gong. Oh, God. This is going to happen, isn't it? Little Chris, is Triple H Undertaker 3 going to happen? Undertaker, lights go out. Nice video package by Taker. Says that he does not want his career to be remembered as what Triple H did to it that one night. So which means, fans, yes, Triple H Taker 3 on deck for Mania. Um, maybe we'll do a video later on talking about my true thoughts on that. But as, of, as it stands, I'm not really too much of a huge fan of it. Do I know these guys can work a good match? Yes. Do I really care too much about this match? Not really. I do not really care that much about Triple H Taker 3. But that's for a later video. This is a Raw review. Let's continue on with Monday Night Raw. And Monday Night Raw, we come back with the World Heavyweight Champion, Daniel Bryan, versus The Big Show in a one-on-one -on -one contest. But before Daniel Bryan comes into the ring, AJ Lee's in the corner, and you knew she was going to play a role in this match, wouldn't you? A uh, decent in-ring encounter by both Daniel Bryan and Big Show. Liked it very much. Um, not the best match, but I did like the little in-ring encounter. And great heel move by Daniel Bryan. Going to the outside. Putting AJ Lee in harm's way. Then blaming the Big Show. And it's kind of odd, you know. Big Show as a face is completely lame to me, in my opinion. I don't like Big Show as a face. Big Show as a face has never interested me. I always loved Big Show as a heel. And as a face, Big Show's just kind of, eh. He just doesn't intrigue me. He's just a big man that comes out there, jumps around, and does nothing. So, like, really, I don't like soft, emotional Big Show. Did I like Daniel Br Bryan's promo they cut on Big Show? Yeah, it was pretty good. This segment, I liked. But in my opinion, Big Show playing the face in a situation like this is kind of weird to me. It feels like more like Daniel Bryan should be the face and whatnot. But the way they used AJ Lee and the way Daniel Bryan used her was a good way for Daniel Bryan to get on that microphone and tear Big Show apart. Big Show wins by countout. And tonight we get Chris Jericho going to speak. Oh, baby. But since there was no John Cena on this week's Raw, yeah, surprisingly enough, there was no Cena live at least. Last Monday night, 
NASCAR superstar Carl Edwards told Cena he will be waving the green flag, um, the go flag for the Daytona 500. Okay, that's cool, I guess. Who cares? Um, and now David Otunga, oh God, he comes out, says, I hope Mr. Laronitis keeps his job. Let's all pray. And then he consists it's to Tebow, and he's doing this, and then Triple H says, oh, you have a match. B.A. Michael Cole. Out comes Sheamus. Sheamus jobs the fuck out um, David Otunga. And really, this is what I gotta say. I'm happy Sheamus won the Royal Rumble, don't get me wrong, but is there not a feud that you can put him out with and maybe a little quick match for that feud to end at rest at the Elimination Chamber? You gotta keep this guy going stronger and stronger. Now, David Otunga is a nice little heel to throw into it, but it would be cool if a guy that he was feuding with came out afterwards and destroy and attack Sheamus afterwards and then solidifying hey Sheamus you may be the Royal Rumble winner but you may be going to WrestleMania but I'm better than you that would be cool but none of that happens Sheamus wins cleanly and we do not know what's going on with Sheamus until after Elimination Chamber I believe Chris Jericho time baby no holds barred Jericho comes out completely buries everyone in my opinion on that microphone in the Elimination Chamber match. First he talks about the Miz and he's like, you notice how the Miz after I left came out in the suit and started to talk in a low pitch voice and got to that serious face? Stole it from me. Kofi Kingston doing all these stunts? Stole it from me. Dolph Ziggler or Vicky Guerrero? Stole it from me when I walked out with Stephanie at WrestleMania 18. Our troop before he was saying, what's up? I was saying, shut the hell up. What's that, little Chris? Little Chris has something to say. Shh, he's talking. You're right. What's up is cooler than shut the hell up. What's up? And our troop should have knocked out Barry dear Chris Jericho. I like you and all, Chris. You're one of my favorites. But please leave our truth out of this. He's a good R truth. But besides that, the main focus and everyone's main focus, they don't care about everyone else Jericho talked about. They just wanted Jericho to address one guy. Everyone in the IWC has been waiting for it. They've been waiting. They've been loving it. And it's CM Punk. Making fun of CM Punk. And my favorite line of the night. And I don't have to put best in the world on the back of my t-shirt to know that I am. Because I am. Jericho basically said that to CM Punk. Out comes CM Punk with some new merchandise. Yo, WWEshop.com. And Punk comes out. And... Looks at Jericho with the microphone, does this weird face, pipe bomb, pretty much, turns around, shows off that he's the best in the world, and Jericho's like, you're just going to do that to me, you can't do that to me, I'm Chris Jericho, oh, good stuff, Um, it was a little cock tease of what could happen on that microphone, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people felt that, I felt it. And I'm pretty sure many fans felt that Punk wasn't going to say anything. But when they do, great microphone work for the next six weeks before Mania. I cannot wait. Out tonight, we got Randy Orton and the Great Khali versus Wade Barrett and Cody Rhodes. Now, this tag team match really didn't do much. Um, it was okay at best. Orton becomes Super Orton, starts, you know, doing all his moves, as he should, you know, hey, nothing you can say, and Kali's not liking it, blind tags Orton, before Orton does the RKO of Doom, hits the chop on Cody Rhodes, and then afterwards, Orton RKO's Kali, showing his dominance and how he's going to destroy Daniel Bryan on SmackDown. In all honesty, I don't really see what was the point. Why not make Cody Rhodes and Wade Barrett believable for next uh, before next Sunday to win that chamber? The way Orton's been looking, the way D. has been looking, hell, even Big Show at this point, one of those three are seem like the prime suspects of walking out. This Friday night will be interesting, and in whether or not Daniel Bryan or Randy Orton will be walking out of that world title, it will be interesting to see how that is booked, because right now. It's kind of almost leaning towards Randy Orton, but at the same time, you could say Daniel Bryan. So this is going to be very interesting how WWE does this in the near future. But Orton wins. 
and we get John Cena versus The Rock at promos. And if you guys did not know, I'm pretty sure most people noticed the WrestleMania theme song changed. It used to be Invincible, and now it's like, hey, 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 hey. Well, if you did not know, John Cena is thinking of a theme song changed. And that theme song that is doing the WrestleMania 28 promos, yeah, that's going to be his new theme song. Eh. Tell me what you guys think about Invincible being seen as new theme song. Um, but we get a 8 Divas tag team match. You know the one that we saw at the Royal Rumble? Pretty much the same exact theme. They show Kane and Cena just to rem make us remember that that feud's taking place still. And showing Eve is concerned about Zack Ryder. And... They had a good little video theme with Beth Phoenix when the heel divas were entering, saying Beth, like, there's no competition in the divas division. The match is short, but the only good thing out of this was that Tamina got the win, and then Beth Phoenix was smiling. I'm looking forward to Beth Phoenix versus Tamina. I think Tamina is one of the better in-ring workers in the WWE today, and a Beth Phoenix-Tamina match would be very, very good, in my opinion. But we all know they're saving Beth Phoenix for karma, and hopefully, hopefully, at Wrestlemania. Triple H talks to Johnny Ace Hornitis and on Tuesday, yes, 10 o'clock Eastern Time, WWE will announce if Johnny Ace will still be the interim Raw GM. So you know what? This whole promo dedicated to Johnny Ace because this may be the last time I'll do this impression is dedicated to him. So you know what? Triple H says Johnny Ace sucks, and Johnny Ace is like, no, I'm cool, I'm awesome, I'm hip, and announces that Shawn Michaels will be on Raw next week, and then after Shawn Michaels is on Raw next week, Triple H threatens Laronitis and says, you suck, and Laronitis is like, no, the board of directors also wanted to see Cena versus Kane in an ambulance match at Elimination Chamber, and that pretty much it about that and your boys make some ambulance jokes all I gotta say about that it, it, it nothing and really it's like 10 in the morning I believe that they're gonna announce if Johnny Ace is staying or not um, um, what do you guys think I think he might stay I don't know if they're gonna keep him there I would like Johnny Ace to stay because I find Johnny Ace very entertaining um I know that sounds fucking weird but I find Johnny Ace very more, much more entertaining through the weeks. They put layers on him. But it's all about the game, right? <laughs> they show more Undertaker stuff. And really, I'm not going to get into that. That's for a later video, like I said. And we get the six-pack challenge featuring my boy, R-Truth, and Little Chris's boy. And Michael Cole, shut up. No. Stop it. Little Jimmy, Little Chris, and all the littles out there are real. If you don't believe that, you got to get your glasses checked. You got to get everything checked. Because, Michael Cole, I can feel it in you. I feel little Michael coming out, sitting next to you soon on Monday Night Raw. But besides that, R-Truth, Dolph Ziggler, CM Punk, Chris Jericho, Colt McKinston, and, Dol and the other chamber guy, The Miz. That loser that no one likes because R-Truth is better than The Miz. Have that six pack challenge. First winner gets the last entry in the elimination chamber. Um, very good way to end Raw. That this this was really such a good part to end Raw. It made me kind of like this episode a little bit better. But very good in ring action. In the end, it comes where you know seems like Kofi's gonna win. Nope, Kofi does not win. And afterwards, more reversals happen, more in ring stuff, and it's really really getting crazy. And then afterwards, Punk gets the GTS on Ziggler. You think this is it? Nope. Jericho comes in, gets the pinfall. One, two, three. Jericho is number six. It should have been fucking our troop, goddammit. But Jericho gets number six. And this makes me think. Jericho will walk out with that WWE title. Lil Chris, look. I know our troop should be WWE champion. And he has every right to be WWE champion. But you gotta listen to me here. Jericho and Punk is once in a lifetime. How about at WrestleMania, R-Truth faces Miz and where Miz gets his ass kicked match? How about that? Because no one likes the Miz. Fuck the Miz. But anyways, how about that? Yeah? You down for that? That's what's up. Now, my overall thoughts on Monday Night Raw. 
Uh, this Raw, it the storyline wise, um, stuff that happened, hype up to Mania because they did a good job seeing their Raw and the Triple H Taker. Whether I like it or not, they're doing a very good job hyping it up now. Um, tying into all the chamber matches, good or bad results. You know, to be honest, it was fine. The flow of the show I thought was fine. Um, I noticed there was a lot of filler tonight, but you know what? They probably wrote the script the last second, which is not always good. And since they probably did probably wrote the script last second or something, this Raw kind of didn't feel entertaining. There was no Rodas Clay to really pump up the value. You know, I thought the first two segments were really good. Then the middle, it didn't feel like utter shit like most Raws. It, it was like, okay, yeah, we got the Raw Rumble in there. But just the quality of the matches and the quality of the stuff, you know, wasn't as good. The Jericho and Punk exchange was very nice, even though they didn't really talk. It was very good. The Punk and Jericho promo. Then that SmackDown Tag Team Elimination Chamber match was just like, eh. You know, it was eh. So, you know... There was some good and there was some bad from this Raw, but I think the good overcomes the bad, in my opinion, for this Monday Night Raw. So I'll give this Raw a B minus C plus. That's my final grade for Monday Night Raw. Remember to check out the forums. You'll see a video later this week, me talking why you should join these forums. This is Chase Oliver 68. Twitter, Facebook, all in the description down below. And I say peace.